So everyone's pretty excited for the Barbie movie, and I'm happy for them, but at the risk of sounding like a contrarian, I'm actually pretty worried. There is a lot about this film that I'm excited for, like the fact that they actually built sets instead of having everything be CGI. That's unfortunately rare for Hollywood these days, often abusing VFX artists by overworking and underpaying them. Here they actually put in the effort to make these incredible sets that really capture what they're going for. I just wish I could be as excited for the plot as I am for the set and the costuming. Not long after the first teaser trailer came out in December, I heard rumors about the plot for this movie. At the time, I figured they were just rumors, and I wanted to wait and see what else we would hear from the movie. However, the movie's recent trailers and interviews with the cast do seem to be pointing the direction that the rumors were true, which had me pretty concerned because I did not like those initial rumors. Now, these rumors are about the general plot, and there aren't any major spoilers, so if you want to go into the film totally blind, I would want you to be aware of that. This is all just speculation, and I really hope it it doesn't end up being true, because that would be kind of a bummer. But according to these initial rumors, Barbie Land, the place where all the Barbies and Kens live, is a matriarchy where women are in charge, but then Barbie and Ken go to the real world and discover that it's a patriarchy where men are in charge. And Ken, tired of being a second-class citizen, decides that he wants that for Barbie Land, and basically tries to take over and turn Barbie Land into a patriarchy like the real world. So in other words, Ken would basically be the bad guy. Now, I am a huge fan of dolls, and I'm an avid collector. However, admittedly, I'm not the biggest fan of Barbie. I'm more of a Rainbow High girly. I only have so much money in shelf space, and they just released the Runway line and the Madison Twins, and I need them all. Sorry, Barbie, but something's gotta give. But I do try to keep up with her, and I really don't care for this boys versus girls plot. I was definitely hoping more for a live-action version of Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse, which in my opinion is some of the the best Barbie content out there. It's a web series that uses a lot of meta and self-aware humor, and it's very clever and playful. They're aware of the fact that they're dolls and a lot of their accessories are oversized to fit children's hands instead of doll hands, and the dream house is adorned with stickers for furniture and doors. But I'm worried the movie will be self-aware and meta in a preachy and kind of mean-spirited way. Like Velma, but probably not as bad. I mean, what could possibly be worse than Velma? But we know because of the trailers they do go to the real world, plus cast members, like Kate McKinnon says, it's about how gender roles take away people's humanity. So this whole Ken is tired of being a second-class citizen and wants to take over Barbie land doesn't necessarily seem like a stretch anymore. It's even reported that he's going to be broke and homeless. Yikes. On a side note, I'm not actually a big fan of the reverse isekai trope, where a fantasy character comes to our world. I just feel like it's really played out, and I'd just rather see the more interesting fantasy world. But back to the point, one of the scenes in the trailers shows Ken talking to a female doctor. Apparently he wants to take out someone's appendix? Oh, I won't let you do just one appendectomy. Let's just ignore that for now. But when she obviously refuses, he says that it's okay because he's a man? But I'm a man. She points out that he's not a doctor, so he asks to speak to a doctor, and when she says that she's a doctor, he basically ignores her and goes over to the first guy he sees, claiming he must be a doctor since he's a man. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking to a doctor. Can I need a clicky pen? No. A sharp thing? No. There he is. Doctor! Somebody get security. I think what might be going on here is that Ken has figured out that the real world is a patriarchy, so women shouldn't be doctors, and maybe in Barbie land, Barbie can just pick up a scalpel and perform surgery surgery no problem, and he thinks that because he's a man he can just do that now? Or something? I really hope I'm wrong. I don't want this boys versus girls narrative in my Barbie movie. I guess I could just watch the 42 animated ones, but you know what I mean. And even if I am reading this scene wrong, I still don't want Ken to be sexist. There's also a lot of talk about how Ken is just an accessory to Barbie, implying that he is seen as lesser in Barbie land, but I also find this confusing. Like there's a Screen Rant article here that says that he's He's always been an accessory, but admit that he was created because girls at the time wanted Barbie to have a boyfriend. Ken always functioned as an accessory to Barbie. He was created in 1961 as a response to requests asking for Barbie to get a boyfriend. Even the movie's tagline cheekingly acknowledges Ken's status compared to Barbie, saying, she's everything, he's just Ken. What does that even mean? They acknowledge that kids wanted this character, so why would they just write him off as an accessory? Another article says Barbie could live exciting 
exciting lives being an astronaut, a fashionista, or even the president, whereas Ken was only featured in stories where Barbie needed a love interest. But that's seriously undermining Ken. They're acting like he's never been anything but Barbie's boyfriend. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Ken has also had many careers, including astronaut, along with other things like fashion model, rock star, movie star, even doctor. Multiple times, in fact. Huh, maybe he could perform an appendectomy. Ryan Gosling also had some choice words that I did not care for. There was an interview he had with Jimmy Fallon where he says, I was surprised how some people were clutching their pearls about my Ken, as though they ever thought about Ken for a second before this. They never played with Ken. Sorry if I sound kind of snarky, this is just kind of ridiculous. He went on to say, nobody plays with Ken, he's an accessory and not even one of the cool ones. Barbie's not even my favorite doll brand and I'm offended by this. Just because Ryan Gosling never cared about Ken Carson doesn't mean no one cared about Ken. This is a character who's been around for 60 years, people asked for him to be created, but here they're just writing him off as an accessory and probably is a second class citizen of Barbie land and then tries to take over. Oh joy. It's kind of weird that Gosling is being so negative about a character he's playing and that Mattel is trying to sell toys of. It seems like Mattel was not on the same page as the cast and crew behind this film. In recent years, Mattel has been overhauling their Barbie brand, and Mattel's COO said that he thought this casting would be a great opportunity to get people who haven't really been following Barbie lately to know what's been going on, since they'll see them on the big screen. These include adding flat feet to the dolls, and having multiple skin tones, body types, and hair textures available. However, it seems like Greta Gerwig and the rest of the cast and crew still see Barbie through this shallow and stereotypical lens, and have this overly cynical tone. They're even calling Margot Robbie's character, who is the protagonist, stereotypical Barbie, which I think is just mean. They also made a big joke out of the flat feed in the trailers, despite the fact that that was one of Mattel's decisions. <laughs> But then again, they do seem to be actively targeting Mattel with this film. Margot Robbie even said when she was first reading the script, she was really impressed with it, but never thought it would be greenlit, because they make a lot of jokes at Mattel's expense, and she didn't think Mattel would let themselves be portrayed that way. But I guess Mattel didn't actually read the script, because they greenlit it, and then had major problems with it later. Apparently, the president of Mattel flew out to London because he was concerned about a scene that he thought wasn't on brand. But why did they wait until they started filming before they talked about this. Shouldn't this have all been decided before the film was greenlit? According to this article, they convinced him to let them keep the scene. So the scene that he flew halfway around the world for because he was so concerned is still going to be playing in theaters. I'm sure that's going to work out great for Mattel. It kind of feels like they're trying to take credit for stuff that Mattel has already done. Robbie says that in the movie they have to make it a point to address all the criticism Barbie's ever gotten, because if they don't, then other people will, and they might as well be a part of that conversation. The thing is, they're pretty late to this conversation. Barbie's always been accused of being too tall, too white, too blonde, too skinny, too materialistic, stuff like that. And instead of being seen as a toy and a cartoon character, they basically say that Barbie represents what women are supposed to be. But I feel like that was just what society was saying Barbie was instead of what Barbie actually was. Why can't Barbie just be Barbara Millicent Roberts, the small town girl from Wisconsin who made it big. She's the oldest of four sisters, very ambitious and career driven, while also being adventurous and caring, appreciating the art of fashion and makeup. Stuff that society has a tendency to look down upon as materialistic and shallow. But why can't you like bowls? I'm just saying, Barbie was more like a friend, with her own unique interests and styles, rather than the embodiment of all women. That's a lot to put on a doll. Regardless, Mattel clearly did hear the criticism and had a conversation that that led to making her diverse. There are now over 200 Barbies, all with different skin tones, different hair textures, body types. There's a Barbie with Down syndrome, Barbies with prosthetic limbs, Barbies in wheelchairs. I'm just saying that this movie isn't actually trending on any new territory, but they seem very proud of themselves. Like they're the ones who convinced Mattel to make these changes in the first place, even though they were already doing this. I just feel like they're making a lot of assumptions and statements about Barbie as a character 
without actually doing any research into who she is and the brand today. And it seems like they didn't really work with Mattel and weren't all that interested in working with Mattel just to push their idea of what Barbie is and what she should be. And I don't really trust them. We've been burned before. This isn't the first time they've trusted one of their properties with a third party, only to get some uh, questionable results. There was Masters of the Universe Revelation. For those not familiar with that headache, way back in the 80s, Mattel had the most popular girls toy, which was Barbie, but they wanted the most popular boys brand too so they could dominate the toy industry. So they created He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, which did extremely well at the time, even surpassing Barbie at one point. So they tried to capture that magic again recently with Masters of the Universe Revelation, a sequel series to the original show, or so we were told. It had gorgeous animation, all the marketing looked amazing, and He-Man was even on cereal boxes. Mattel was sure to have a hit on their hands, what could possibly go wrong? And it turns out everything, everything could go wrong. The crew behind Masters of the Universe Revelation had their own plans for the series, and that plan was to kill off He-Man, the flagship character of this series, in the first episode, and then spend the next four episodes basically making fun of him. Needless to say, fans were very disappointed. It seems like in both of these cases, Mattel left their brands with people who, let's just say, had a different vision for the property. It looks like fun, colorful camp on the surface, but then there are these troubling signs. It doesn't even seem like they really get the brand or these characters. I don't know. Again, this is all just me speculating about things I've heard and things that the cast and crew are saying now. I really hope I'm wrong about all of this. And again, this is all just my opinion. How do you guys feel about the Barbie movie? Does any of this worry you? Or do you think I'm reading into it too much? And what do you think about Barbie as a brand? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to our members. Stutania, Tyrant Carnivore, Shiny Orc Boy, The Rabbit Mancer, General Bolivar, Death Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Dukari the Professor, Equestron, Norman Sweet Cream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Garcia XV Legend, Hunter Rose, Dash Hound, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Butcher 7 Actual, Felix Bam, Soundboy 00, Owen Wildish, Player Zero, Kitsune Fiora, Lucas Geist, Dana Dine Executive, J Draws, Ninja Rex, Blue Spirit, Bandito Bane, and Lil. Thank you all so much for your support. If you'd like to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this content, you can leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And that part's free. You also have a buy me coffee if you want to support us that way. But any support would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.